Hello and welcome to our last and final fourth um, lecture on physics for vision for catch up for A2 level. Um, Steve Jones will talk to us uh, and review electromagnetic induction. Hello everybody. We're going to go through electromagnetic induction today, which is a very, very short module, but actually it's got quite a bit of physics in it. But before we start, let's just have a recap from 4.4. So here we've got the left hand rule. And if you remember, this is the motor rule. So, so this is a oh, motor rule, OK? And this is used when a current is already flowing. So the current is flowing already and you look in at the force on a current, for example, in a wire. So this left hand motion uh, motor rule right, used when current is already flowing. So I'll put that in there. Current is flowing. All right. So that's the first one. Remember, some motion. All right. So I'll just write it in there. Motion. First finger is field. So that's your B field. And then uh, perpendicular to that is the second finger, which tells you which way the current was flowing when you did this. So current is flowing in this direction, B field in that direction, the motion is upwards. So that's a quick review of the left hand rule. All right, remember it's the motor rule, current is already flowing. We've got the right hand rule. So I'll just abbreviate that to the right hand rule. Again, same nomenclature, thumb is motion, first finger's field, second finger's current. And this is when you have a force on a wire and uh, you're inducing current okay so what you've got is motion in a magnetic field which is inducing the current that's what the right hand rule is for this is called the generator rule all right so those are the two rules left hand rule motor rule current already flowing you're finding the force on a current carrying wire right hand rule generator rule you're inducing a current by the motion which is perpendicular to your b field okay and finally, let's just move this down a little bit. You your right hand grip rule. Now, right hand grip rule tells you the direction of the current in a solenoid, right, from the direction of the magnetic field. Of the B field in that solenoid okay now some of you will say hang on i don't use it for that i use it for the current or the direction the magnetic field around a long straight wire can be used for that as well all right so you can use it in solenoid so if your b field is in uh, in the solenoid is going from left to right as we are looking in here then the current will wrap around the top coming towards you all right so that's how it's used and we're going to come to use this one shortly all right so let's get to 4.5 then all right let's just drag it down so the first part then is the definition of this um thing called phi right a b cos theta so if we take a just a random surface right we'll call this the an area right this random area doesn't matter what it is right and we have these lines of flux passing through now lines of flux if you think of your bar magnet and you drawn your magnetic field lines the, those are the lines of flux right so i'm just going to put them in this way right essentially what you've got is your b field right so your b field is going through this this area right so what we're saying is this b field which i'm going to call just b from now on right is if you think about the strength of this b field right it's got to do with two things it's got to do with this this um I get, well, this flux, these flux lines, right, which I'm going to give this nomenclature a thigh over the area. All right. So what we've got is the strength of B field to do with how many of these lines of flux, this thigh feature over the area. So the smaller the area, then the greater the B field or the more lines of flux, the greater the B field. So that this B field is due to this, these um, flux lines or what I call flux over area. Now, these are all perpendicular here, right? They're all perpendicular. If they weren't perpendicular, then the strength of the B field in this area would be less. So actually, if I rewrite this, right, which is what we've got here, is we got, if I rewrite that for phi, right, I've got I equals, what do I equal? 
equal AB. And then I have to have this cos theta in it. Now, usually cos theta equals uh, um, one and it falls out. All right, so we're only left with this thigh equals AB. So that's where that comes from, all right? So do with the area that um, these lines of flux pass through and how many lines of flux pass through. So that gives you B field, quick rearrangement, right, from this equation, and we get this phi equals AB cos theta. And that, that there is, we're gonna use shortly. Okay, now let's go take that a little bit further. Say, for example, we have a bar magnet. Let's find my pen, there we go. Let's just quickly do a bar magnet here, right, as best I can. All right, and let's say uh, this is south, this is north. Now, because the bar magnet is going to have a few lines coming out of it, these lines of flux. Let's draw some lines of flux. I'm just going to do them uh, like so. I'm going to do them as best as I can. I'm going to spread them out. Remember, they would go all the way around and back into the south. Oh, hang on. Let's do that in the north because that will make more sense. Come up two south. Uh, and let's do this. All right, like that. And let's do a few more. Let's do like that. And we'll do one over here as well. There we go. So what have I got? I got one, two, three, four. Let's do the same side. So I've got one, two, three. If I can get one there, four. There we go. Now, those are our lines of flux. And don't forget they loop around to the, to the south. Right. I'm going to put around here now a loop of wire. Let's do one here. Let's see if I can get a loop of wire. Let's change my pen for a second. Let's do black so you can see. All right. So let's do a loop of wire around here. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Loop of wire. There we go. Down there. And back out there. Now you can see at this moment in time, right, I have got um, four flux lines going through this loop. So I say my flux, I've got flux linkage, okay. In other words, these four lines of flux are um, going through the area of my loop, right, and at the moment I'm going to equal it to four because I've got four lines of flux in there. Let's call this bit A here. Right now, if I do this loop and move it slightly to the left, let's try and get the loop the same size. It'll be a bit challenging, but we'll see what we can do. All right, let's have a look like that. There you go. That's not bad. Let's loop this round like that. So I've done roughly the same size. OK, now if we look now, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, one, two, three. Actually, we can say that one was five, can't we? Because that one's just going through there. So now we've got a part of B, so that was A. Now at B, my flux linkage equals seven. Now it's this change of flux linkage, right, that causes something called an EMF, right? So in this case, if we're going back to this, right, my link or my loop is N. So the number of loops I got is N is one. So in this case, N equals one. So my flux linkage, there's no symbol for flux linkage, by the way, you just have to write it out if you need to. All right, Link, linkage equals N phi. Well, phi is defined up here, look, AB. So we don't need to define that any further, All right? But in this case, I've got N is equal to one. If, I, if that was two loops of Y, which I'll go to in a second, that would be N equals two. So basically every time I put a loop in, my flux linkage is gonna um, multiply by that number of loops, all right? So, Let's just drop that down again. All right, let's get my spelling right there. All right, so that's where I am at the moment. All right, so that tells us, so there's two things I've got here. All right, so the flux linkage defined by the number of turns on the coil. All right, so let's, where's my pen? There it is. So number of turns in the coil. All right, multiplied by this magnetic flux. All right, remember, flux is just these sort of field lines going through. We call them flux lines. All right, so from that, then we can start looking at some of Faraday's law and Lenz's law. Well, let's look at Faraday's law to start off with. All right, so if I can get this in, all right, so here's my pen on there. Is. Let's consider uh, a loop of a coil of wire. Let's do this. Let's just do some coils of wire. There we go. Lots of coils of wire. And let's take it out and put it to a voltmeter. There we go. So you put a voltmeter there. Let's go back to that and let's put a magnet in, in there. All right. Now, while the magnet, let's go north and south, for example. Now, while the magnet is stationary, 
nothing happens because the flux linkage hasn't changed. But if I was to push that through there, then if you can go back and think about what I've done here, this flux linkage has changed because I put it into the loop, right? Instead of moving the loop up, I put it into the loop, or I can move the loop up, it doesn't matter, all right? Then I've got this change in flux linkage, right? And this change of flux linkage produces an EMF. Uh, right, so that produces ooh, an EMF, right, or a voltage, right? So this EMF is a, a voltage. Now, what, uh, uh, right, if he was to move this mag it faster or faster, right? So, We seem to be losing you, uh, Steve. Your your voice is not coming through, and your your screen is not coming through. I think um, Steve is going on to saying that um, EMF um, is the rate of flux cut. Um, the EMF of a, um, a moving conductor is proportional to the rate of flux cut. Yeah, where, and also yeah. when there's a larger cross section. OK, we've got you back now, um, Mr Jones. Oh, did you lose me? Yeah, we, okay, we I'll lost quickly me. go through that. That's OK. OK, I'll quickly go through that. Apologies. All right, obviously, the system is not up to uh, physics tonight. Right, I'll quickly go through that. OK, so what I said was that uh, Faraday discovered that the change in this flux linkage produced an EMF and he found out that the great EMF was created when you move the magnet or the coil faster. Right? You put more turns in the coil, use the stronger magnet or this loop has a larger cross section. So that's what he discovered. So what he came up with with this law, he said the EMF was equal to the number of turns times this rate of change of BA, right, flux linkage, well, well, let's put down as phi for now, over T, which gives us our speed aspect, right? And we know that is the change in uh, BA or AB, whichever you want to write it, over uh, DT, okay? So that is Faraday's law. Now, this only gives us, let me just, um, Get some space in here to write a little bit more. Where's my mouse gone? There it is. Let's get a bit more space in here. Uh, let's move that out of the way. Right, and let's scroll down a bit. So this only gave us the uh, strength of the magnetic field. All right, so which is good, right? So Faraday's law gives us the strength of this EMF. So Faraday's law gives us the magnitude, if you like, of the EMF. Now, Lenz looked at this and he went a little bit further with this. What Lenz says, hang on about, what you haven't realized, that this EMF that's uh, induced opposes any change in this. And what Lenz did is he went, actually, Mr. Faraday, it's not complete. All right, you need to put a negative sign in there because all this is opposing the change that is happening here. All right, and that's uh, Lens uh, as applying the conservation of energy law. So Lens or Lens's law gives us directionality. Okay. So that's what Lenz's law did, and it's a consequence of the conservation of energy. There we go. All right. OK. Let's scroll down a little bit here and see if we can get up, because I've moved everything down. There we go. 
Right, let's, oh, it's too far. All right, let's move these out of the way because they're in the way. Now, let's have a look at the application of this, right? And this actually, there's two ways of doing this. There's the textbook way, which um, hurts your brain, quite frankly. And then there's a, a simpler way. Now, it doesn't matter which way you look at it, right? As long as you understand it. So let's apply this Faraday's law, i.e. the EMF, to the rate of change of flux linkage. So what we've got, if we look at this, let's get my pen back up. Let's do, uh, blue should be all right. What we've got is this, um, magnet is moving in this direction here all right now what we've got then is the b field is in this direction which is fine because we've got north going that way so the b field or the b lines are going that way or the field lines are going that way which means the change in b this bit here is going in the same direction right so that's faraday's law now lens's law says this b induced this uh, emf is in the opposite direction right that way so whatever direction your change of b is the induced field is in the opposite direction, right? Which means that actually the induced B field in my coil there is in that direction. So if we look at our right hand grip rule and we use our thumb to show the direction of the B field within the coil, then what we've got is the current goes around the coil in this direction. And you can see it there. It's going around the coil in this direction. And that's quite important, all right? So you need to understand that if you know the direction of the B field in it, it's opposing the motion of that, then you'll get that, okay? So we need to be able to understand that. Let's look at it then if we put the south coming out, all right? Well, let's do the north going out first, because it's probably easier. We've done north going in, let's do north going out. So north going out, the B field's in the same direction because north is here, so the lines of flux are going in this direction. But this time, change in B is in that direction. So the B induced is imposing that and therefore is that way. So this time we use the other way, our hand the other way. So the B field is that way in our coil and the current goes across the top like this. And if you look, there it is. Look, it's going across the top like this. All right. Similarly, it gets a bit complicated now because if we put south going out, right? So the field lines are going on, B field is going that direction. Then the change in B because I'm moving is in the opposite direction, right? So again, my change in B is the opposite direction. B induced is in opposite direction to that, so therefore it's going in. So again, if we use this rule, the field lines are going that way inside the coil, so my current goes across the top, all right? Similarly, if I was to push the south in, the B field is still that way, all right? Because the lines are going this way, right? They're going that way. However, A, B this time, is going the opposite direction, which means the B adduced is that way. We use this rule. Now, if that looks very confusing, you're probably right. All right. So if you're going, what did he say? I didn't quite follow that. I need to follow that again after. It's actually an easier way to remember it. OK, and I will show you that easier way. All right. Let me just draw some coils here. Right. So let's let's take an example one. Let's say we'll call this A. Right. Let's do a coil. All right, there we go. Let's do a coil of wire. I'm not the greatest doing coils of wire. There we go. Let's do a coil of wire. Let's take our first example. Let's go north like that. OK, so we've got north there, south there, and it's going inwards. Right. So the way to remember this, and this is really easy way, right? This north is going in here. Remember, this is going to induce a magnetic field which opposes everything according to Lenz's law. Right. So if that's going to go in there, this thing is trying to oppose it. And the only way that this coil can oppose it if it turns itself into a little magnet and makes that north and that south. OK, that's the easy way to remember it. So if you've got north going in, this is going to begin north. It's opposing that motion, doesn't want to do it. Lens law, quite right. I'm opposing your motion. I'm going to make this a north. All right. And if you look at this, all right, this is where it's clever. All right. If I draw an N, I'm going to draw a curvy N. OK. Then as we look at the end of that coil, it's going to go around in an anti-clockwise direction. All right, so it's going to go around in anti-clockwise, which means it's going to go around as we're looking at this end in an anti-clockwise direction. But if you look, it's exactly the same as that. All right, so you can look at it as just simply this is going to oppose that motion. Therefore, it must be a north. In your mind, draw an N or just do it on a piece of paper. It's going to go around anti-clockwise as you look in at this end. All right, let's look at uh, number B. Let's look at another example. All right, so let's look at B. All right, let's look at the north coming out then. 
right? So this one here. So let's do my coil. Yeah, I'm not great at doing coils. There we go, that's good enough. Right, this time we're going to do our magnet exactly the same, north, south, but it's moving in this direction. Now, this is going away. This doesn't want that to change. So in this case, it's saying, no, please don't go away. I want you to stay where you are. So it's going to become a south and a north. It's going to track it back in. It doesn't want that change. All right, so here it's going to repel it. No, don't go in, don't go in. This is, a, don't go away, don't go away. So I'm going to track you back. And if you look at this, all right, you've probably realized this already. I'm going to draw an S, arrows in the end. So this way, so that was anti-clockwise. In this case, you can see it's clockwise. So as we look at this here, it's clockwise. It's going to go around in this direction as we look in the end. So in this direction, as we're looking from this end, and if you look, it's exactly what we've drawn here. All right. Similarly, let's do this one at the top here. Got a little bit of space to get it in. All right. So this time we're going south out. Let's change my colour pen. So we'll call this C. Let's do a small coil. There we go. There we go. So we want south. So let's copy it. South is here. North is here. It's being going out. All right. So again, this is south. It's going out. It doesn't want that change. So it's going to attract it back. We're going to make this a north. That's a south. You can see what's going on here. I draw a little N. And as we look at it, it's going to go around anti clockwise. Which means it's going to go around in this direction over the top. And if you look at this example over here, it is going around over the top. OK, and I'll do the last one just for completeness. All right, which is you can see where I'm going with this. And if you think about it, see if you can get it before I do. Now, I'll let you worry about what that's going to be. Remember that it's in there. So what is this side going to be? Yeah, you're quite right. North. OK, and um, it wants to repel it. Hang on, have I done that right? Uh, da, 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 da. No, that was a south, wasn't it? My apologies. Yeah, if you spotted that, give yourself a bonus mark. If you didn't spot it, that's dreadful, right? So therefore it would go around. Is that right? Hang on, which way was I going? Let's have a look. That's south, it's trying to get out. Oh no, yeah, south. It wants to attract it, doesn't want that change. So in that case, it's not that way. All right, it's south, which is clockwise, all right, which is in that direction there. Is that right? Should be right. Let me just check. Uh, da, 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 da. No, I was right, right the first time. You were right Sorry. the first time. I was right the first time. Yeah. Right, hang on. Right, so that was an N, that was an S. Just checking myself, and this was right, and that was right, and that was wrong. My apologies. Right, and here then, right, it's trying to repel it going in. I am right. That's north, that's south. And therefore, um, no, it's trying to repel it to stop it from going in, which means now I'm confused what we got here. That's a north. Yeah, that's right. And that is trying to stop it going in, which means that's a north, which means. Uh, hang on. Now I'm confused. Which way is that going? That has to go that way, which means it has to be clockwise. So that would be a south. There we go. How to get confused very easily. Draw too many diagrams. All right, and there we go. All right, and that I is a clockwise direction. A north, the last one, won't it be? Because. Hang uh, on, hang on. I've made one of these wrong then. Let me have a look. Right, yeah. north, that has to be a north because it's repelling it. Quite right. Thank you very much, Mrs. Owen. That's a south. One of these is wrong then. But, right, that's a north. It's going to repel it which means that is a N, which is, as you can see, anti-clockwise. And it goes round in this direction here, which is wrong compared to that, I think. And the third one was right first time. Yeah, and I'm just checking that was right first time. Let me just check this. Uh, if you're trying to pull it out, that wants to attract it. If you're trying to push in, that's absolutely correct. OK, yeah. Yeah. there we go. So what we got is 
that's the way to do it. Right, so just think of what is trying to happen here. This case is repelling, right? This case is repelling. That case, it's attracting. This case, it's, uh, that's what I've done wrong, is it? Yeah, that's what I've done wrong. I'll tell you what I've done. I've copied the one up here, look guys. All right, that should have been, there we go. That's what the confusion was. That should have been south. That should have been north, which means that that would be, if you tell me guys, that would be, it's pushing in, it's gonna be south. That's where I've gone wrong. I've done the same one twice. All right, so that would be north. So in this case, I was right the first time. All right, this would be a south. There we go. Slight confusion there. Hope you can follow that through after, and it's a clockwise. And that's my stupidity in making sure that I didn't copy that down there. All right, okay. Hopefully you've got that. Follow it through back if you want. All right, those are now correct. Uh, and just follow the principles I did with the first two. All right, those are definitely right. So I got confused by being an idiot there. Now, so that's important. Right, so you do need to be able to do that and apply that to your um, situation there. So if you've got a coil of wire magnet going in, you need to know which direction that current's going. And there's some questions in past papers about that. Right, let's go to the next bit. If you have any questions, that please post it in there. If I didn't make it clear, please post and I will come back to it. All right, so don't worry. All right, but if it's clear for you and you understood me, uh, even though I made a mistake, just, um, you know, that's great. If you do need some more answer or more clarification, please come back. All right. The idea that EMF is inducing a linear conductor moving at right angles to a, a field. Let's do a magnetic field. Oh, not with that pen. Let's do a magnetic field. All right, we'll do. There you go. So we come in into the page. We're into the page of this field. All right. And let's do a conductor. There we go. Let's do it down here. And this is at some point T. All right. And some time later, so we'll call that this initial. And some time later, it's over here, all right? And we'll call that final. All right, that's this final bit there. And it's moving to the right, obviously, with some velocity V, okay? Now, if we go back to Lenz's law, Lenz said EMF, or sorry, Lenz and Faraday's law, is minus N d phi by dt, all right? Which you know now is minus and uh, I'm going to use a small d, so the uh, small amount of d rather than a change in dBA by dt. Okay, so that's what he said. Now, what is A? A is the area of the conductor or what the conductor passes through. All right. Uh, so that's the area it passes through. Okay. We've got B, which is a B field, all right? And T is time. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Right, what is the area of this, all right? Well, we've got a length here. So as long as we know this length L, that's a good start. So area, let's put it over here. Area equals length times width or depth or whatever you wanna do. But what is the width, all right? What is this bit here, all right? Well, we know velocity is V, all right? So if you think about it, then uh, this width, this bit here, is equal to Vt, right? The velocity times the time in that. So if you take time to be one, that, that makes sense, right? So we're doing a little bit off, so we can take T as one. So what we've got then, the area equals length times velocity times T. So if we then put that into here, what we've got is, all right, we've got the EMF, is equal to, uh, well, how many ends have we got? We've only got one, so we can just put the one in there, right? That falls out. Times, notice I've got the negative sign there for now, times uh, D, B, well, we haven't changed that. It's the A that's changing, not the B. The B is a constant, and the A is, uh, what is it? L, V, T, by D, T. Now, if we take T equals one, all right, if we take T to be equal to one, all right, then what we've got is that falls out, and what we've got is the EMF is equal to minus B still there, all right, L still there, V still there, and that's it. So this is for a, a moving conductor in a magnetic field, the EMF induced, 
still a negative, Lenz's law still applies, is equal to the negative BLV. Now that's quite an important one because you can actually solve any equation with this using Lenz's law in full. But if you know it's a moving conductor in a magnetic field, it reduces down to BLV and that's quite useful. All right. So it's not essentially you know that, but it's going to save you a lot of effort and a lot of time if you uh, remember that. OK. All right, so that's application of that. And then the next application is in generators. Right. And this is um, probably um, one of the hardest things to to get your head around, but actually it's not that uh, difficult at all. All right, let's find my mouse. Where's my mouse gone? There it is, it's down there. So let's take uh, an AC generator. What we've got is a loop of wire or coil of wire. In this case, I've just got a loop of wire, right? So I've got a single loop there, all right? And I've got a magnetic field and it's going from this direction to this direction, north to south. And because it's an AC generator, these coils or this coil is connected to some slip rings. OK, now the slip rings play a vital role in an AC generator and you'll see why in a second. So if I've got um, motion, in other words, if I connect this to some like a wind turbine and I get it to spin in this direction, right? then what I've got is the motion upwards. All right? I got my B field going that way perpendicular to it at this moment in time. So my motion is upwards, my B field is that. Now using the right hand rule, okay, remember right hand rule is a generator rule, it's used when you're inducing a current from motion. All right, if we use the right hand rule, if you get your, your right hand out now, you can see that my motion is upwards, okay, the field is going north to south, which means the current is going to move in this direction. OK, it's going to come down this way, down here, in here, out through this commutator and in through the circuit. So it's going to go through the circuit in that direction. OK, so in this case, we're looking around this way like that, All right. which is great. Now, obviously, this coil is now going to go up, around and back down to here. So this coil now, or this side of the coil, is now this side. Remember, this is connected to this coil here or this commutator here or this slip ring, sorry, this slip ring here. So this slip ring is connected to this one. That's swapped around now. If I change the color, right, you can see while this on this side, this is still going to go up because it's still moving. The field is still going to go that way, all right, because it's still north to south. And the current, due to the right hand rule, is still going to go this way. So even though the coil has flipped 180 degrees, everything stays the same. However, if you remember, my green path took me out this one, but this side, when it was on this side, it's connected to there. So when it's flipped over, it's still connected to there, right? So it actually come down here and go through that and connect to this one, and we'll go out through here. You can see that's in a 180 degree different direction to what it was when this was flipped the other way. And that's what gives us our AC. So every time it goes through 180 degrees, it flips direction because of these slip rings, right? They're connected to all these wires are connected to that slip ring. And then as this side flips back over, the current will change direction to here, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so the right hand rule always still applies. I've just chosen the one side and that's it. If I chose this side to show you, you know, on the on this, um, on this the green one, right? If I chose this side, the motion is down, all right? The motion is down, the field lines are that way because the motion is down, the current, if I go green again, the current will go around in this direction. So it doesn't matter which side you take, right? Just choose a point on one of those sides, use the right hand rule and everything will work out nicely. OK, just remember. So what we've got then, if we look at this side on, so at the moment we're looking at a sort of 45 degree, ang degree angle in a 3D approach. If we look at a 2D approach uh, here, right, we're looking side on. Now this section that we're looking at produces no EMF. So this section here produces zero EMF. The EMF is produced on the sides that we can't see at the moment, right? So EMF is produced by the coils or the wire on this side. So in this case, we are cutting lines of flux, so we're going to produce an EMF, all right? This uh, coil rotates with some um, angular velocity, so this coil rotates angles around the point, and we're going to go around in this way, in a B field, all right? So let's go down a little bit further. Now let's look at this scenario here. All right. Remember these coils or these wires, if we go back to the very top. All right. 
these lines of flux have to be, uh, you have to have some flux cutting, you have to have um, some flux linkage there. And if you cut the lines of flux, or right, so in this case, we've got flux linkage, but the wire is cutting the lines of flux, right? So if you think these wires are going out like that all the time, right, in this direction, and as I put the wire through, it's cutting through these field lines, and that's called flux cutting. As long as I've got flux cutting, I've got an EMF, all right? So I need to change that flux linkage by flux cutting, all right? If we go back to here, all right, in this one, you can see, all right, that we've got to have our angles, right? So we've got to have our perpendicular angles for current um, force and um, field, all right? If we got all those in 90 degrees, we're going to get some EMF, all right? Well, let's have a look here. So we've got this rotation. So what we've got are these coils on the side here we can't see, in this case, they're moving down. All right, they're perpendicular to the B field, which means we're going to have an EMF, which is perpendicular to both of them. Now, we can't do that in 3D, but we're going to get an EMF. We're going to get a current induced, and the current induced is an EMF. Okay. If we look at this one, so this one, we've got maximum EMF, all right, because the flux cutting is at its maximum. Everything is perpendicular to everything else. This condition here is met fully. In this direction, in this one, let's go down a little. In this one, it is not met fully. So you're going to get an EMF, but not a maximum. All right. So that, that's fine. That's okay. We're going to get an EMF. It's not maximum. In this situation here, if we look, the motion is this direction. Now, if we look at our perpendicular, our three perpendicular uh, force field or motion field and current, right, then what we've got is the motion and the field are parallel to each other, right? This condition is not met. Therefore, no current at all, all right? So instantaneously, So it's instantaneous, no current, right? And similarly for this one, instantaneous max. So you've got instantaneous maximum, instantaneous minimum. So how does it look in between? Well, let's have a look. Right, so if we look at the coil, what I've done is side on again, I've got the coils. So here we've been going around clockwise. So here we've got them perpendicular, it's moving that way, so current is zero. So we can put on there, we'll put a little X there, right? Let's have a look at this point. Because it's moving perpendicular, we've got maximum current. Now, we've not in enough information to say whether it's max pos or max negative. Let's just choose uh, max positive for here. All right. Let's go to the next 180 degrees. Here, again, moving perpendicular, so no current there at all. Now, what we have is red over here and blue over here. This time we've got blue over this side, red over that side. So whatever we chose on this side is opposite this side. And we have got max EMF, which means I'm going to do opposite maximum there. Again. We're no flux cutting at all because we're parallel. We're looking at here. So if we were to draw a curve in there, all right, because we've got points in between that we haven't plotted, if we were to draw a curve in there. If I can do my best curve, might not be great. Oh, that's not too bad. We've got a sine wave, and this is what AC looks like. So this is um, what our AC um, wave looks like. And that's what the EMF is going to look like. So this is our EMF and it's an AC. All right, so it goes from positive to zero, also zero to positive to zero to max negative. OK, are there any questions there, Mrs Owen? Uh, oh, no questions, no questions. That last point, though, should be on a zero, shouldn't it? So that we've got a oh, complete... Quite right. Oh, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll put it there and I'll bring it in. Quite yeah. right. Thank you very much for pointing that out. It comes into there. That's so okay. It's not, not that one at all. Yeah. Do you want to go over? Uh, Thank you for bringing that out. Uh, we've got one minute left. So if you want to review anything. Uh, if there's nothing to review, we'll, I will go back up to here. Right. What I'll do for clarity, I'll quickly draw these again. Right. Because uh, I'll do it very quickly. Right. There we go. So we'll have. A south to north, going that way, which means it's opposing that motion, right? Which means we need a 
the south. Oh, let's change the colour pen. We'll have a south and a north. It's opposing that, which means we go around in this direction, looking at it. And the last one, if we have exactly that. No, that's north. Yeah. Oh, talk <laughs> about definition of confusion, right? How can you get it wrong so many times, guys? Uh, how can you get it wrong? There we go. And then this one, let's get this one right. OK, so we got south, north, and we're going inward. It needs to repel it. So let's do my coil. There we go, we'll do the coil. And then this time, because it's trying to repel it, south, north, and there we go. At least we've got the last one right. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Steve Jones. That just shows you how complicated it can be. And you've got to have a clear head to kind of like look through it or, you know, kind of like visualise it and, and the application of Lenz's Law and Faraday. Yeah. And, and, and thank you very much for taking us through all of that. And I hope you've enjoyed these four sessions that we provided. We've certainly enjoyed um, giving them to you. And um, um, yes, good luck in the assessments that you will have now and it's goodbye from us.